Hello everyone, welcome to an all new episode of the Indic Explorer show. I'm your host Vineet. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to the channel. Uh this channel explores Indic culture and its interplay with modernity. And one of the interesting facets that many people who are trying to understand their roots, especially youngsters these days are getting into is the ancient Indian uh mystical science i would say of yoga and when you hear the word yoga you tend to kind of think about rishis in the himalayas people meditating chanting doing yogic exercises asanas yoga studios is quite a in thing now and uh, most of all new age gurus teaching yoga crash courses so in the middle of all of this haze we need to look at yoga much deeper than this and to help me demystify yoga i have with me a very special guest on the show today ami ganatra namaste ami namaste vidit very happy to be here yes and uh, so ami uh, for the lay people and because the show is largely targeted to the youth uh, what is yoga uh, what does it seek to uh, achieve uh and what are the origins of you know the uh, of yoga itself and where, how did it develop so you actually started off very well uh is it something that rishis did in the himalayas yes they still do it is it something that is being taught as a crash course physical you know all these cool asanas and postures that people do is that yoga that is also yoga uh then what really is yoga so you know all of this is yoga in a sense in a way all of this is yoga but the way it started is i mean today we think of yoga only as asanas we think of it as postures more often than not so even you know when people talk about i am learning yoga what they are learning is essentially asan maybe some pranayam as well right and then you have multiple types even even within that there will be like some classes offering hatha yoga some of them will be like power yoga some of them will be hot yoga to ye sab chalte rehta hai all of this is is, is still essentially the asana part of yoga but how did yoga start like when when uh, our rishis actually envisaged or thought about yoga how did it start did it include asanas then yes it did but that was not the only part yoga is a darshan in our philosophy so if you look at the indic knowledge systems we have the shruti smriti and in the smriti we have the uh, vedangas dharma shastras darshanas which we call the philosophies right we call the six schools of philosophy in which you have the nyay vaisheshika then you have sankhya yoga then you have uttar mimamsa purva mimamsa which is basically the uh, the samhita part and the upanishad part which is the uttar and purva mimamsa in that yoga is one of the schools of philosophy philosophy se bhi zyada darshan now what was darshan meant to do darshan as we know today darshan we use it in our usual other languages as well to see so uh, the word itself means to see but see what examine what all our darshans have eventual goal of moksha okay just i am just putting the concept down for now to again just understand moksha i mean forget moksha for now it's more about understanding reality what reality we say the ultimate reality what is the ultimate reality we say we are a part of a holistic truth but for some reason given that we are a part of this world of this practical loka world we do not always see the truth for what it is yeah so through various approaches through various practices through various um tools if i may we can achieve that state of mind where we actually see the ultimate truth for what it is you can call it the brahman as we call it in the indic knowledge system yeah the word you use is is brahman or the parmatma whatever it will differ from different schools so that ultimate truth the ultimate reality you know the ved vakyas that we have aham uh, brahmasmi tatvam asi basically i am 
that divine i am that divinity so basically all these schools seek to establish the connection between this reality where we are living and the uh, ultimate reality which we think of as the brahman or the truth which is um which is undivisible yeah which is undivisible and which has no duality is nothing that truth is what we seek for which we have the darshan now while that might be the larger goal yoga itself is very interesting because it lends itself it's a science which lends itself to us developing ourselves physically mentally emotionally spiritually and all of that yeah unlike some others so nyaya for example is also a darshan which is all about arguments shastrarth vad vivad yeah ultimate goal of that is also moksha and seeing the reality and uh, you know do, achieving that realization that oneness with the param tattva however nyay also has other uh, implications uh, and application so to say that how do you structure an argument how do you do vad vivad how do you do a debate right how should your uh, arguments be structured so to say so while the ultimate goal is still that oneness with the param tattva with the reality there are other vyavaharik or practical applications similarly yoga has that practical applications as well but even before i get into that how is yoga defined within the shastras now all these six darshanas that we have they all have one core text which lays out what the darshan is all about for yoga the text that we have is patanjali yoga sutra basically yoga sutras written by rishi patanjali okay and in that the first line is basically atha yoga anushasana like now we talk about yoga now we talk about the discipline of yoga and then he explains what is yoga the first the definition definition itself comes in the first line it says yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha ha chitta is basically mind now i want to just uh, say this up front there might be different terms used by different people so let's not get to caught up into it just get the gist of what i'm saying so if i say chitta some people will say oh no chitta is not mind it's something else but largely it is the mind as we understand yeah the mental the brain mind complex vrittis are the ongoing thoughts at any point in time i'm talking to you right now but i'm sure beyond just listening to me there are some thoughts going on in your mind right that is the work of our mind it will create thoughts here yeah? so vrittis are those continuous thoughts if i may that keep going on in our mind what does yoga seek to achieve yoga says i want to quieten your mind completely to completely put all these vrittis the continuous thoughts that are going on the brain the working of the mind to rest why it says yoga chitta vritti nirodha tada drashtu swarupe avasthanu vritti sarupyam itaratra tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam so that you can see your swarupa so that we can see our reality for what it is otherwise we see ourselves and the world around us based on that vritti that we have in mind now there is a very beautiful example of this given by swami vivekananda yeah he says that if there is a pool say a pool of water the water might be very clear when it is very stable you can see what is inside it right but now if you throw a stone in it to usme wo waves aa jayega hai na pani hil mil jayega now when that happens can you see what is in there no inside right why because those waves or whatever that's created the bubbles and all of that it won't allow us to see what is inside similarly vrittis do that job because of which we cannot see us for what we are we cannot see reality for what it is hence we need to achieve complete cessation of these ongoing thoughts and put our mind to rest okay now this is a larger concept of yoga now where does asan what we understand yoga comment yeah but before i proceed do you want to ask anything based on this yeah uh, i actually do 
फ्रॉम वॉट यू टोल्ड ओके योगा लुक्स लाइक अ दर्शन विच इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ फिलोसफी नाउ टिपिकली फिलोसफी टू माई माइंड साउंड मोर लाइक वॉट यू डिस्क्राइब न्याय आर्ग्यूमेंटेशन डिबेट रेटोरिक कमिंग टू अ कंक्लूजन यू नो ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स बट फ्रॉम वॉट यू आर टेलिंग मी योगा सीम्स टू बी मोर ऑफ अ प्रैक्टिस बेस्ड सिस्टम rather than uh, uh is i mean the esoterics of philosophy uh, uh, uh what i'm trying to understand is how important is practice versus the philosophy Correct. because if you're putting your mind to rest yes there is no place for the philosophical rhetoric and argumentation and all yes. of that right like all that Correct. deep thought so yoga is so uh yoga is experiential yeah now there are certain things now when we talk about understanding the ultimate reality or as yoga says it lays out its goal right to see the truth or see us in our real rupa in our real form to see us in our real form is the goal established mm. now this can happen through mm. argumentation as maybe nyay would have approached it or some other way like doing some of these uh uh practices of yagna and all of that using you know the gnan marga that could be one way then the other is experiential if you have experienced it then you have the answer yourself right then you don't need any question and answer if i can understand it for what it is then i don't need anybody to convince me in that sense you is experiential you can only achieve that goal if you do the practice not just by thinking about it or arguing about it and that is why you see in bhagavad gita krishna talks about yoga many times at one place in the second chapter itself he says samatvam yoga uchyate that a sense of balance equanimity in a sense again that you know continuous upar niche upar niche jo ho raha hai mind ghoom raha hai that is very shanta that's come down you achieve the sense of equanimity balance that is yoga he says when there are no dualities like har jeet your success failure happiness sorrow heat cold you beyond all that in all those situations you can remain quiet that sense of equanimity is yoga in the second chapter itself aage ja ke he says योग कर्म सु कौशल योग इज अ स्किल इन एक्शन योग इज अक्सलेंस इन एवरीथिंग दैट यू डू राइट सो इट इज नॉट इट इज दैट स्टेट ऑफ बैलेंस बट इट इज ऑल्सो एन एक्शन दैट वी नीड टू डू सो इन दैट सेंस योग इज अ प्रैक्टिस एंड योग इज ऑल्सो अ स्टेट टू अचीव सो योग इज अ गोल एज वेल एज द पाथ टू अचीव दैट गोल बट इट इज एक्सपीरियंशियल theory cannot take us theory cannot give us any benefits it might give us the concept but unless we actually do it we won't yeah. see the results in that sense it is very similar to purva mimamsa in purva mimamsa we actually have the practice of actually doing the yagnas rituals, rituals. yeah Ritual. so whatever yeah. you gain is out of doing the rituals unless you do it you can't get get it right how much ever we argue so philosophy itself yeah. like in the western construct is different in the eastern construct is a lot it has many different aspects to it let's say the goal is similar but there are multiple ways one can reach there either through argumentation either through you know deeper study of the physiology which which vaishya shikha does yeah like physical objects get deeper 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 into it or what sankhya does which talks about the entire cosmology how did the how do like the purush and prakriti how did things come into being purush to begin prakriti. with right how do we live like one is matter one is energy one is atma whatever how did they come together and how did uh, this whole creation happen that is what sankhya looks at so through all of this you can the claim is that we can get to the ultimate state of knowing the reality for what it is okay now even there like even in yog there are multiple paths one is gnana yoga one is bhakti yoga hmm. the one is what we call um, 
Ashtanga Yoga, which we will talk about today. So the usually what we think about yoga is this, and then there is Karma Yoga, which also which Krishna has talked, spoken about, right? So in Karma Yoga, you achieve that by doing work, doing our daily work with a certain approach and attitude. Gnana Yoga is understanding that reality through study, through Swadhyaya, largely study of different texts, what Rishis have said, vagere, vagere, vagere. And then getting to that sense of realization. Yeah. So all of these margas are, so then the Bhakti Marga. Bhakti Marga is where we say there is a deity, my Devata, my Ishta Devata, and I surrender everything to that Devata. My life, I don't have any karta bhav at all. Whatever is done, whatever I get, good or bad. Yeah, happy or happiness or sorrow. I don't care about it because everything to me is coming from that Devata. I will accept it with full humility. That is also a sense of samatva, right? Come what may, I still do what I do, but I surrender the success, failures and the color of it to my data. So that is one mark of again achieving that yoga. Now let me explain the word yoga. Okay. So the word yoga itself has two connotations, two meanings, so, so to say. One is uh, yoga yujjate. So basically one that combines, yeah, one that joins, like for the same word which is used for yoking. Like you yoke a bullock to a cart, right? So the same thing, to connect. Connect what? Jivatma to the Paramatma. That is one. That is one. The other is having, bringing out unity between the physical body, the emotional part of our body, the soul, the Atma part of it, and basically the spiritual. Yeah. Again, unity in thought, speech, and action. All this is also a sense of yoga to make that connection happen between the spiritual being and the physical being. All of this, yeah. The other is, which is more relevant to the yogic darshan, is yoga samadha. Basically, which means that which allows, that which leads you to concentration. That which leads to samadhi, but essentially concentration, with where you fix your mind upon something and you restrain your senses from going haywire. So in both these concept, uh, contexts also, yoga, the Shabda is used. When we do the practice, this is all these are the aspects we are looking at, basically. I know that this is a little heavy, but I think once we start talking about the applications, it will be no. easier. No, no, it's, 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 it, it, no, no, it's quite interesting, actually. So I wanted to know what is Kriya Yoga, Hath Yoga, huh. you know, okay. these... Uh, okay, fine. I mean, so what let's are they let's doing? start from the basic. Yeah, I said yoga purpose is yoga chitta vritti nirodha. What basically ensuring that the says the activity of the mind is stopped, is reduced, whatever. Now, hmm. when that happens, basically our concentration also increases because if I'm thinking about ten things. Together, I am not able to concentrate on any. But if there is only one thing in my mind and nine thoughts have subsided, then I am able to focus on that one thing, right? That is why Krishna says, Yoga ha karma su kaushalam. How can we achieve excellence in everything that we do if we are able to focus fully and completely onto that one action that, that, that we are doing, right? That is how excellence can also be achieved. Uh, so, anyways, so that focus, achieving that kind of concentration is what also Swami Vivekananda calls as Raja Yoga. Or even it, it's generally called as Raja Yoga, where basically you att attain that uh, state of complete concentration, complete focus, which is also called Samadhi, but Samadhi, I, I would say, is one level higher where we would actually become one with whatever we are concentrating on. Yeah, that is the ultimate state. So while Raja Yoga is not exactly what, is, is not the word which is used by Patanjali. It is the goal that he states is also considered as the state of Raj Yoga. Yeah? So it's not exactly that, but we can assume it to be that. Now to achieve that state of complete concentration, focus, samadhi, there are different paths. Like I said, one is Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, all of that. The marga suggested, the, the path suggested by Patanjali is Ashtanga Yoga. Now, what is Ashta Ashtanga Yoga? Ashta Anga Yoga. Eight limb yoga. Yeah. Basically, there are eight 
steps not ste so they are not sequential steps they are eight paths that one needs to start practicing in order to achieve that state of final samadhi what we can say either raj yoga or what the word used by uh, patanjali is kaivalya at state of kaivalya basically samadhi let's get to that level of concentration now in that there are eight parts as i said the first is uh, yama second is niyam then you have asan pranayam pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi okay so these are the eight limbs of ashtanga yoga now what happens when you do anushthana anushthana is practice of this eight limbs patanjali says your discriminatory faculty basically vivek buddhi rises your vivek buddhi becomes strong if you do all of that yeah so basically this practice ultimately re leads to development of intellect illumination of brain illumination of wisdom in the brain okay that is one goal one uh, benefit that we are also getting out of it now patanjali talks about these eight things he talks about what yamas are he talks about what niyamas are he talks about asan in only like two sentences he says sthira sukham asanam asan is that position where you are completely stable and you are very happy very com comfortable and very stable once you are in that state where there is no effort required where you are fully stable and at ease at comfort then you become ready to do pranayam and pranayam is what pranayam is that uh, shwas uh, shwas prashwas yoga gatir vichheda the breaking of the usual breathing that you have yeah and pranayam is actually extending that breath extending in the sense normally agar hum breathe karte hain to one inhalation and one exhalation might be taking say 4 5 seconds whatever actually not even that it's even faster yeah when we talk about pranayam we are extending that cycle of inhalation and exhalation both so if the regular is say 4 5 seconds you would say 8 10 seconds and it can extend to as much as we want so extension of that prana through practice that breath cycle is basically pranayam but he doesn't say how to do it he only says this has to be done now later on some other text got written now i'm not saying that there is a sequence in terms of first patanjali wrote this then somebody else came and wrote a book on hatha yoga no it's not that people were already practicing just that the text itself that we know is a much later a text which is called the hatha yoga pradipika now what is hatha yoga so what does hatha yoga do hatha yoga explains how to do the asanas how to do the pranayams how to do the shuddhi kriyas to be able to actually achieve that raj yoga so even in hatha yoga pradipika it is actually written that kevalam raj yoga ya hatha hatha vidya upadishyate only for achieving that raj yoga the hatha yoga vidya has been enumerated okay now in that it goes into the details of which asans like it has a list of asans how to do those asans it has a list of pranayams it has a list of shuddhi kriyas all of that which is given yeah so that that whole thing is hatha yoga the practice of asans along with pranayam and all that so today when we see these different postures you know exercise yoga related exercise and postures and asanas that we see they are all a part of hatha yoga all of that okay now in that some teachers found their different styles for example in vinyasa yoga style what they said is they took the asanas and they said we will do certain combinations of asanas at a certain speed okay similarly somebody else picked up something else and they said we will do it in this manner we will do this combination of asanas at this speed using this kind of breathing technique whatever yeah so hence today that you see power yoga or hot yoga they said okay we will do these asan sequences but we will do it at x degree temperature 
yeah then there were some others who called who said okay we will do acro and they did those asanas using some other techniques yeah ayangara ayangara is they basically use tools and props to help you get into that state of asana that is mentioned in hatha yoga but all said and done it is still all hatha yoga only everything that you see today falls under hatha yoga okay which includes asanas pranayams usually what they do meditation could be included may not be included but largely it is this so hatha yoga is the all and is the umbrella of the the practices that we do today now hatha yoga itself actually okay has benefits but before going into the benefits now what is kriya yoga okay so a little difference in kriya yoga so patanjali yoga sutra defines kriya yoga as tapas swadhyaya ishwar pranidhan why he says why why do we need kriya yoga he says to achieve the chitta vritti nirodha to stop the activity of the mind you need to first cleanse your mind because there are lots of obstacles which which do not allow the stopping of the brain yeah and he gives a list of those things usually our mind is always disturbed right that disturbance could be due to anything it could be the due to anxieties that we have it could be due to some diseases which we have it could just be our nature yeah it could be just we have too much desire and we have too much greed and all of that which is not allowing our brain to rest so how do you start by removing these obstacles yeah how do you start by removing certain kleshas which are not allowing the brain to rest the mind to rest so for that he said one is ashtanga yoga anushthana doing the ashtanga yoga completely but there is also another way which is a kriya yoga in which basically you focus on tapas swadhyaya and ishwar pranidhana so ishwar pranidhana is basically saying you whatever you do you surrender to a deity to a devata whoever you call ishwar he defines ishwar but in general basically in practice it is basically whoever you think of as your devata surrender everything to that to that bhagwan and what what should you do as practice one is of course swadhyaya so using listening to gurus who are talking about what matters what not yeah what is real knowledge how do you acquire that real knowledge what matters in life what doesn't matter in life all of that or adhyatmic stuff yeah and there is tapah tapah so tapah means what so tapah is the actual practice that you do as a discipline it could be saying every day one hour i will sit in dhyana or meditation yeah anything that you do anything that you choose to do as a practice now kriya yoga has then been taken by certain schools and it has been given it has been expanded further like the yss right some of these schools they they talk about kriya yoga the main focus is through meditation they also might have some breathing techniques and everything that they include but the main focus is meditation through meditation through swadhyaya and of course there is this bhakti element to it that you achieve that state again of chitta vritti nirodha or spiritual growth all of that whatever all that comes under that because eventually chitta vritti nirodha is again a state the goal is tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam so that we can see ourselves for what we are which is basically take, now taking it to the spiritual adhyatmic realm yeah however this is the eventual goal just doing hatha yoga has lots of physical and mental benefits as well okay so what is happening today so what you mentioned initially about you know yoga crash course and all of that i think i have no issues with that because i believe that even doing just this part of asan in a certain way along with pranayam has a lot of physical and mental benefits and if we do that well by itself we will be pulled deeper to explore the path of dhyana call it meditation and eventually take us to our ultimate goal of you know finding the truth but even if it doesn't even if it doesn't it has very real benefits of helping us manage our stress and live our lives better hmm so now my question is do you think uh, it is important to have a spiritual guru or a teacher to help you through the process of yoga 
or do you think it can be diy through youtube or you know whatever resources you have see for what's the role of a guru depends on what one wants ra right? right so if one is looking to proceed or progress on the path of adhyatmik growth eventually it always helps to have a guru who understands our chemistry physiology everything right because all of us are different i i I'll, i'll give you an example say kisi ko bol diya ki aap dhyan mein baitho sit in meditation yeah forget meditation just tell somebody sit down close your eyes and sit for some time a lot of people can't do it it makes them anxious right because we don't know what kind of thoughts will come out we are not even ready to face our own thoughts acha ab usme if somebody is already not doing well say somebody already has is going through a bout of depression yeah वैसे वी आर टोल्ड मेडिटेशन ध्यान डेफिनेटली हेल्प्स विथ ध्यान विथ विथ ऑल दीज एनसाइटी इशूज एंड स्टफ विच इज ट्रू बट इफ यू जस्ट लीव दैट पर्सन टू हर सेल्फ और हिमसेल्फ एंड आस देम टू डू इट देर इज अ हाई चांस इट विल इंक्रीज दर डिप्रेशन एंड एनजाइटी राइट बिकॉज एट दैट पॉइंट यू वेन यू सिट वी आर नॉट यूज टू सिटिंग क्वाइटली राइट सो जस्ट बाय सिटिंग क्वाइटली आर ब्रेन वुड एंड स्टॉप the brain will pull out all sorts of things which are buried in the memory which we've never thought of right all sorts of things that we are trying to run away from but when you're sitting quietly those things will come out because till now what we've done we go into denial we make ourselves busy we don't want to face certain trouble troubling thoughts right but when you just sit down close your eyes all these things will come back and if you don't have somebody who can guide you through, through this process it can actually be harmful yeah so it is always good if there is a guru if somebody is looking for an adhyatmik growth one or second especially on the path of meditation however if the interest is purely on asan it is still okay to follow youtube and learn but even in that i think it helps to have initial guidance because the thing is uh again all our bodies are different right our flexibility levels are different um our stamina is different how much we can hold our muscle tone all of that is different so when we see people doing on youtube they are usually the ones who are very good at it right now if we and and they've been practicing for a long time so we start to calibrate ourselves with them directly not knowing what our starting point is and one it could either already discourage us from doing what we are doing what second if we try too hard it might actually lead to some physical injury so i would still say that having doing any simple course forget a guru any simple course from any class where you can get the foundations right you know some basic understanding of your physiology and the postures and how to do it and what is the idea behind it because it is not just plain exercise yeah you have to synchronize it with your breathing and all of that thoda sa foundation aa gaya na then it's okay then you can also follow youtube and continue doing your practice i think that is still okay i do a lot of i follow a lot of teachers online and you know to deepen my practice further but i have i have the basic grounding of you i actually have done a whole teacher training course as well so that's different so now to deepen my practice i definitely follow people online because the foundation is already strong so guru i would say definitely it's great if you have somebody especially on the path of meditation and on this not exactly a guru but a teacher definitely helps okay so now you mentioned about meditation and you said that it's okay if someone is only focused on asanas because there are physical benefits right but uh how do i say it isn't it kind of a dilution is- of the principles of yoga because you're only Correct. focusing on one you know or even if you're only doing meditation but not the asanas which is also no so that possible, is right but it's a- so here's the thing right the goal is to achieve chitta vritti nirodha now if you can achieve that without doing any of it then is also then also it's fine right so so again in patanjali yoga sutra he says he says 
हाउ डू यू डू इट सो ही गिव्स ही सेज अभ्यास वैराग्याभ्याम तन निरोध थ्रू प्रैक्टिस थ्रू प्रैक्टिस एंड अ सेंस ऑफ रिनाउंसिएशन वन कैन अचीव चित्तवृत्ति निरोध प्रैक्टिस ऑफ व्हाट नाउ टू टॉक अबाउट प्रैक्टिस ही इज एक्चुअली देन टॉकिंग अबाउट फर्स्ट क्रिया योग इन ब्रीफ एंड देन अष्टांग योग सो दिस इज द प्रैक्टिस टू अचीव दैट चित्तवृत्ति निरोध बट ही सेज देर आर सम पीपल हु गेट इट वेरी फास्ट why because there are some purva janma sanskaras they don't even need to do all of this they might immediately get into that state of dhyana because probably they are born with that yeah it is through previous janma practice we believe in reincarnation we believe in punar janma right so he says for some people it is very easy it will just come for some they will have to really practice to achieve that stage yeah now if we extend that logic there are some others who are not yet qualified to even get to that path so should this then be completely closed for them because they they are not even inclined to go that way right not everybody wants to achieve the spiritual benefits not everybody wants to get to that level of adhyatmic uh, growth because all our we we are our starting point is very different right so then should we say that it should be close to others i would say no because in that sense is jan mein thoda progress kiya even if it is through asans probably aage ja ke it still helps right maybe in the next janma but on a serious note the practice itself even though someone is looking at it only from a physical perspective the the way it is structured gives a lot more benefits yeah that is the whole difference between doing yoga asan and exercise that itself is a very big difference in yoga and exercise because in yoga uh, exercise the usual exercise what happens is our parasympathetic our sympathetic nervous system is what you actually kick uh, kick kick off or other you know that's that's the active one whereas in yoga your parasympathetic nervous system comes into play and i'll go we'll get into a little bit of detail of this but more than anything what we are actually doing is we are exercising our cortex our prefrontal cortex basically apni jo buddhi hai na buddhi ko mazboot karte hain yog mein yeah now all issues that we have so even when patanjali talks about the obstacles in the path of yoga he is talking about all these mental conditions mental conditions in the sense ये एक तो वही है कि काम क्रोध लोभ मोह मत मात सर वी आर ऑलवेज वेरी इम्पल्सिव ये अच्छा लगता है ये नहीं अच्छा लगता है वी आर लेजी वी हैव आइडियाज एंड बायस विच स्टॉप दैट वट एवर द सेशन ऑफ थॉट्स इन द माइंड राइट नाउ वाई डू दो थॉट्स कम इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस वाई डू दो इम्पल्सिज वाई आर दे देर इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस इज द क्वेश्चन इफ वी डेंट हैव दैट तो तो कोई प्रॉब्लम ही नहीं था राइट नाउ दीज obstacles which he says are obstacles in the path of yoga are actually obstacles in our life lives as well these are the ones which are creating anxiety issues these are the ones creating stress these are the ones making us take wrong decisions what i wanted to ask you was yoga and hinduism right many people uh, especially uh, neo yoga practitioners tend to kind of remove divorce hinduism from the practice of yoga itself they think of yoga as a system and uh, you could say they kind of secularize it you know as a practice rather than a part of hinduism and sometimes even hits a few hindus might say is it the same thing is it interlinked are they two different things are they connected you know so what how do you like i want you to weigh in on what do you think of yoga do you think it's a an integral part of hinduism or do you think it can also be seen outside the religious context